Let's start with a question. If you had only one measure to use to evaluate a country's healthcare system, what would it be? Now you can take a moment and think about it, but I can tell you what policymakers and think tanks um, in the healthcare space typically use, and that's life expectancy. I'm sure many of you have seen kind of a typical newspaper article that the US has the most expensive healthcare system in the world, but our life expectancy is terrible compared to other nations. So who has the longest life expectancy? Well, not surprisingly, it is Japan at 84.4 years. Again, not surprisingly, the US lags quite a bit behind. But here's where it gets interesting. Here's a group that is the most similar to the Japanese uh, in terms of their genetics and likely culture, but they get the healthcare in the US. Where do you think they end up? Are they closer to the US? Or are they closer to Japan in terms of life expectancy? And it turns out that the answer is closer to Japan. In fact, better than Japan. Here's another group studied a long time ago that also gets its health care in the US system, but also tends to emphasize exercise, diet, um, no smoking, no drinking, et cetera. Where are they? it turns out that they are also closer to the Japanese than the US. In fact, when we do a little bit of a deep dive, what we find is that despite being sort of terrible on average, sub-segments of the US population have the best life expectancy in the world, while others are on par with developing nations. And this is all happening in the same, in the context of the same medical care system. So what's going on here? Well, it turns out when it comes to the overall health of a population or the overall health of an individual, medical care, it contributes very little. Whether you look at the full breadth of factors that include genetics or just the modifiable factors, um, even with the advent of things like CRISPR, we're still not quite there in terms of genetic modification of humans. Healthcare contributes between 10 and 20% to our overall health. So that's both good news and bad news. The bad news is that we're spending a lot of money in the wrong place if we're trying to achieve health. The good news is that we as individuals, as communities and populations have actually a lot of power to impact our health.